trembling pain some bands and with you going around and looking at new talent and stuff like that what tips could you give them for their stage presence mm -hmm. well generally speaking I am the type of producer who tries to find what it is that the band does well and makes them attractive what jumps out at you of their natural whatever they do and try and maximize that rather than changing what they don't do to something else. Um, find the artist, let the artist do what they do and maximize it and try and remove all the clutter. If there's anything I would say, remove the clutter. Um, a lot of times inexperience has a lot to do with everything, um, stage-wise especially. Um, and you're talking about performing, right? You're talking about live yeah, like performance. One of the things that you'd mentioned to me that really drove it home for me is that you can say, <clears throat> when, you, when you made the comment that um, they look like they're singing at home in a mirror right. and they're not performing. Well, that's their experience. Right. Right. So. You know, it's, it's, it's a luxury to have played 10,000 shows because you draw on all of that. I had the, I had the advantage of when I played my first show with Billy Joel, um, I almost crapped myself. I mean, I couldn't concentrate. It took me a month to be able to concentrate during the gig because we were, we had a stage that was sold, they sold every possible seat in the arena. So it was sold all the way around. So people were literally on top of you. And it was a packed 20,000 seat generally arena screaming at the top of their lungs. It's a sound you've never heard before. It's louder than the music. You can't hear what you're playing. You think about everything else that's going on and to someone who's, and that was after I had done thousands of hours of playing on stage already and I thought, oh, I'm experienced. I got this down. Had I not done any of that stuff, I don't know if I could have somebody tell you you look like you're playing rock guitar in a mirror because you go, oh, you know what? You're right. And Maybe that's, maybe for some of these bands, that's their 10th show ever. So experience is the thing. You got to do it. You got to go get your butt kicked somewhere. You got to go, you know, comedians say the same thing. You have to go put in the hours and hours and hours and hours of experience. That's how you learn what, what to look like on stage, what, how to look, not to look like a poser, how, not to, how to involve the audience, how to involve your band members, how to make it, you know. But all this has nothing to do with the song, by the way. Because if you don't have the song, no one's going to come see you play anyhow. So. Perfect. What advice to get gigs? I mean, do you send out uh, e mass emails? Do you, what, what are your tips there? Just get them. Just play anywhere you can get them, get them. High schools, 
parties. Uh, I can't tell you the number of times when I was in junior high school and high school that we just played for free, just in somebody's basement. Because really, you're in this because it's more fun to be at a party and be in the band getting the chicks than it is to just be a regular guy. So if you can remember that, then believe me, the guys that are making millions of dollars, if they don't have that still, they don't make millions of dollars for very long. They're gone. So really that's what you have to keep focused on is, is the, the desire to be there and do the, the thing. You got all these bands that are playing local clubs in their area. Every once in a while, they'll get a gig at a bigger place where there's, you know, a bigger audience and stuff like that. How do they get out of that rut? How do they get into, you know, opening for some of the bigger names? True. That's a good question. Um, really, that is something with the bigger acts. Uh, you have to go to the agencies that book the gigs. Um, and to the promoters themselves, and to the artists themselves. Really, those would be the three places. Uh, I, really, what's in my future is writing songs and playing rock and roll piano, like J Dr. John, Leon Russell. That's really what I love to do. I have a couple daughters that can sing, so I'm going to be writing some hit songs too, some R&B tracks. I've done that as well. For I wrote a song in, in 2003 called uh, The Kiss Off, for an artist named Brooke Allison, who was a, a Disney artist. She lived here in Dallas at that time. So I've really had my hand in a million different pies, and now I'm going to hone it down to a couple different pies and go with those for now. I think uh, unless Eric Clapton calls or somebody like that, I think my, my rock road touring days might be done for a little while. When uh, the opportunity presents itself, I will tour myself. Uh, I do opening shows from time to time around town here. And uh, hey, that's really the thing for me, is playing the piano, so. Well, I hope that day comes soon. <laughs> I've been listening to your tracks over and over. And oh, okay, good. So. good. All right, thank you so much, Jeff. My pleasure, I hope uh, get some clarity on something. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay.